I'm Davey. I'm awesome. And welcome to Davey's Awesome Wrestling, where I review wrestling-related things, all from the perspective of a fan, not an insider. So this week, I'm going to be reviewing The Rise and Fall of ECW, written by Tom Lavero. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the DVD, The Rise and Fall of ECW, which, basically the same premise, it's telling us the story of ECW, its rise, its prominence, and its fall. Like most DVDs versus books, if you want a lot of the detail that was left out of the DVD, you're gonna have to pick up the book. Like the DVD, this book has a lot of interviews with people who were around back then, like Tommy Dreamer, Paul Heyman, Taz, the Blue Meanie. Of course, it talks about ECW back when, before it was ECW, when it was Tri-State Wrestling Alliance, owned by Todd Gordon, and how that really wasn't gaining momentum, not to mention he had a falling out with his booker, Eddie Gilbert. And of course, as we know, that's when Paul Heyman came along, took over booking, and it also became Eastern Championship Wrestling under the NWA banner. And of course, interviewing Paul Heyman, talking about how he was frustrated with the wrestling business as a whole. It needed a change, it needed a facelift. So to sever ties with NWA, they got set up to where his champion, Shane Douglas, would win the NWA Championship and then throw it down. And then that's when they would change it from Eastern Championship Wrestling to Extreme Championship Wrestling that we all remember and love. Then started talking about how Paul Heyman wanted to change the way things were done. Instead of being just a typical independent wrestling promotion, doing the typical independent wrestling things like bringing in veterans who had a heyday in WCW or WWE who were very difficult to work with, come in and be their champion because they were not willing to put anybody over basically getting them out of there and getting in some new stars. Of course, the first stars he created were the public enemy. Guys that would come out with a table, put somebody through it, which was a big deal back then. Now a table breaking during a match is not that big a deal, but back then it was huge. And to have some people that would do that every match, oh my God. And more into his visionary ways of doing things, like seeing guys on the independents that just weren't going anywhere and rebranding them, building them up, because back then wrestling was extremely gimmicky. For example, The Sandman. It talks about how when he first started, he was very, very gimmicky, came out in colorful stuff. He was going by The Sandman, but he was playing a surfer character, which Paul Heyman quickly saw. That just wasn't him. He saw that what is he in real life? He's a guy that likes to go to a bar, hang out with his friends, and get into fights. So let's take that and let's build that up. Let's have a guy who comes out with a beer and a cigarette and just beats the crap out of people. And as we know, Paul Heyman was a master of accentuating the positives and hiding the negatives. He could build up people by building to their strengths. So for example, a guy like the Sandman. Never going to be remembered as somebody who's like a technical wrestler. Ever. He's a brawler. So let's not go there. Let's not have him do a bunch of headlocks and takedowns. Let's have him just beat the crap out of people. And it worked. He was one of the biggest names in ECW. And of course, as people were getting popular and moving on, they weren't having as much success outside of ECW because, again, they had Paul Heyman to build him up that way. Which is true because guys like the Public Enemy could not find success in WCW or WWF. And it talked about a lot of the guys he had built up, like Tommy Dreamer, back when he was a guy that wore suspenders. Or Taz, when he was a Taz maniac. How he'd taken guys that had been wrestling for a while, like Scotty Hotbody, and turned him into Raven. And how he was able to do this by utilizing a veteran like Terry Funk. One of the veterans that was very rare back then, who was not all about keeping his name going, but building up the next generation. There's one reason I will always respect Terry Funk. Because he had a very clear understanding that if the veterans didn't build up the new people, once the veterans were gone, what business is going to be left? And of course it went into the backstory of their very first pay-per-view, which was really difficult for them to get off the ground. Especially after that infamous mass transit incident. Which we got a lot more detail of that incident in the book than we ever got in the DVD. But after they got over that and all the struggle that went on with that, they were finally able to get onto pay-per-view, their first pay-per-view, Barely Legal, which was the first real ECW show I got to see. As somebody who grew up on the West Coast, I couldn't watch like a weekly ECW show until they were on TNN. My only exposure to them had been when they were on Raw, but they got to plug their pay-per-view, so I ordered the pay-per-view with my brother and I was hooked. They were doing crazy stuff, like choke slamming people through four tables which back then was insane. Of course, the book went into after Barely Legal, how they started having some success, and Todd Gordon started helping people get contracts with WCW, so Paul Heyman kind of forced him out. Which, the rise was actually kind of their fall, because as they got bigger, 
but the money wasn't coming in as much, so it wasn't bouncing out. They couldn't pay the talent. Talent was moving on. It was just a big balloon that was going to burst. And eventually it did, and it went into more detail about that. How they'd gotten onto TNN back when it was the Nashville Network, but was transitioning into the National Network, which is now Spike. But TNN was really only using ECW as a means to see if wrestling could work on their network because they were working on a deal with the WWE to come to their network. And it hurt ECW because they never once advertised ECW. They never once put out anything to say ECW was here, which I actually remember because I found out about ECW on TNN on accident. It was back in the days of before DVRs. You had to go onto a TV Guide channel and sit there waiting and waiting and waiting or go flip channels. I was on TV Guide channel. I saw ECW. I thought it must be like a documentary or something about ECW, but I was like, I'll go check it out anyways. And then I was like, whoa, it's an actual show. I tuned in every week. But how they needed to get off that network and get onto another one, but that was the problem. Them being so violent, they were a very niche product. So there wasn't exactly a whole lot of networks biting for them. But when into that, there were a couple of networks that wanted them, but some just wanted ridiculous demands. For example, Fox wanted them, but they wanted them to be able to put on a show every day of the week, and that was just not economically gonna happen. So, because they couldn't get on another network in time, they ended up having to fold. And it sucks, but you know what? It's kinda just the way revolutionary things go. ECW kinda had to fall so that other promotions could rise up. Because now we've got tons of independent promotions that are thriving. Because ECW did show you can thrive catering to a niche audience. Basically, like I said, this book is everything that you saw in the DVD with a lot more details. In the DVD, they kind of just addressed everything, but very quickly. Like, did a small segment on their beginning. A small segment on their rising up in their talent. A small section on their downfall. This one, instead of small sections of each, it went into actual detail of what really happened. Basically, what I like about this book is where... The DVD gives you nothing but the main course. This one gives you some of the side dishes. It clears things up. It makes things make a lot more sense. So if you were an ECW fan like I was, and you liked the DVD, I do highly recommend that you check out the book, The Rise and Fall of ECW by Tom Lavero. It's a great read. I've read it a couple times. So there you have it. That's my wrestling review this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, hit that little bell so you get notifications when I post new videos, and leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of the book, The Rise and Fall of ECW. Tell me some fond memories about ECW. Love you guys.